Hey guys, time for another update on the IS300. Uh, this one's going to be a little different in that I'm going to take you underneath the car and just try and show you some of the changes I've made underneath the car and hopefully lighting and stuff will work out okay. So let's give this a shot. Alright, I guess I'll start kind of near the front of the car and just work my way back. Um, you can see the wastegate right there. And I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but went to an open dump. It used to come out of the wastegate and just loop around and dump right back into the downpipe right here. I was able to just use a single like 60 degree bend off the wastegate, dump it nicely over here. It clears the plastic under tray and stuff nicely, so shouldn't have to worry about anything getting melted or damaged. Super excited to see how it sounds with that. All right, up next is this Fuel Lab fuel filter. It's new. I haven't been running a fuel filter up until now. All of the fuel I get comes directly out of a VP Racing barrel, so I figure it's pretty dang clean. But uh, when I pulled the pump setup out of my tank, there was a little bit more contamination than I thought there should be. I figured it would be wise to install an inline fuel filter like this to save the new injectors. I don't want to hurt those in any way, so it's worth the peace of mind just installing this fuel filter. It's a Fuel Lab 828 series. The, the element is, I think, fiberglass, so it's compatible with E85 and stuff. Uh, 6 micron. It's the longer of the two inline fuel filters that they offer, so little more surface area shouldn't become a restriction at all. I think the, the, the Dash 8 fuel line itself would become a restriction before the fuel filter. So anyway, nice upgrade, nice clean fuel going to the rail. Don't have to worry about hurting the injectors. Moving back a little further to the back of the trans, this is a newly installed TRD V160 transmission mount. It's significantly stiffer than the just the factory Supra one. So I did a highly scientific comparison of the two. And as you can see, it's a lot stiffer. So it should be awesome, um, especially because I have the Vibra Technics engine mounts, which are nearly solid. So with the factory transmission mount, the gearbox would move around more than I liked. So I was happy to be able to find one of these. When I originally did the V160 swap, I had a hard time finding the TRD trans mount. It seemed like it was discontinued and nobody had it. And so I ran the stock one and was never really satisfied with it. So super happy to find it a genuine TRD trans mount because it fits perfect and you know it's going to be a reliable part when it's a factory part. So, and Some of you might notice or have questions about this. This is just a drive shaft hoop that I built. Um, a couple years back I grenaded the old drive shaft I had in here and it made a mess. It went up and actually broke the shifter and stuff when it broke. So I didn't want to go through that again. So I did a couple of things. I upgraded to the Drift Motion, their monster shaft with 1350 U joints and stuff. And then I built a couple of drive shaft hoops to hopefully keep the shaft in place if it does fail again. But um, this thing is pretty beefy. I bet the I bet the rear end or the rear axles would fail before this drive shaft would. So anyway, that's pretty much it for underneath the car. Uh, you can see I have the, uh, the exhaust reinstalled. It's all back on. Um, at this point, I'm basically just waiting on the harness to be built and the fuel pump setup. So those are the two things that I'm basically waiting on before I can fire the car back up and get it back on the ground so should have another update here within the next couple weeks and uh, yeah let me know if you have any questions see ya